is not new information. People have been talking about formaldehyde in beauty products for quite a while. Formaldehyde. This is its chemical structure. Formaldehyde is a colorless gas. It is actually generated naturally in many ways, from the smoke of burning wood to shiitake mushrooms and maple syrup. It's not all bad. It's really good at killing bacteria. For my nurses, my science lovers, my chemists, it kills gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. But now, every shoulder has an angel and a devil. It's a known carcinogen. Need a refresher? Something to point out is that to become a known carcinogen, you have to be a really bad guy. Not like kinda bad, really bad. There's some kinda bad guys out there that have yet to be proven bad guys, like Glycosphate that's in Roundup. Urgh, Monsanto. But that's a topic of another video. So. It's a known carcinogen. Who decided that? The National Toxicology Program. Yeah, that means it causes cancer. Now you're saying to yourself, yeah, I've heard that it's bad. So uh, I don't buy anything with formaldehyde in it. <laughs> ah, but you might, because here is something you may not know. There are chemicals put in cosmetics, beauty products, body products that are formaldehyde releasers. What does that mean? Basically, they are called carrier systems. They are chemicals that slowly release formaldehyde into a product to preserve it. In some ways, it's genius but it's also toxic. So I read an independent study that analyzed data they received from the FDA. The conclusion they came to, pretty much one in five products contained a formaldehyde releaser. Now that study was, I believe, 2010. So there's been six years. Obviously we as consumers have gotten more and more educated thanks to the internet. The green beauty movement is alive and well. People are super educated about the products and their bodies. So what I wanted to do was mention the top three formaldehyde releasers according to this study that evaluated the data from the FDA as well as the EWG. Now I've mentioned before the EWG doesn't tend to be my go-to for information, but what it does a really good job at doing is when you search a chemical, there is a sidebar that you can click on products. So as I went through these three products, I'm gonna tell you how many total that are listed in their inventory had this chemical in them. Number one, oh wait, it's really hard to pronounce. Here it is. Okay, in the EWG database, 242 products were listed with this ingredient in it. Number two, not gonna try to pronounce that one either. The EWG site listed 1,200 products that this ingredient is listed in. Again, not gonna try to pronounce that ingredient. According to the EWG database, 819 products. Now this would all be fine and easy, right? If these if these three ingredients, and that's just three, a 2009 study found 42 formaldehyde releasing agents that are used in cosmetic and beauty products, as well as household and industrial products. Like I said, it would all be really easy if they just all went by the same name, but they don't. I'm gonna list all the variations that you can see based on this one particular name. Now I'm just going to tell you some quick stats from things I found in these studies. In 2009, a study pointed out that it was very difficult to measure formaldehyde in products that contained formaldehyde releasing agents and to measure the percentage that was actually in the product as it started to age. Now here's something that's a little bit mind boggling, okay? In Europe, they will only allow a concentration of formaldehyde releasing agents of 0.05%. In the United States, when they looked at concentrations, they found everything up into 1%.
yikes. So like I said, this video is not long, it's not groundbreaking, but what the question that I'm really intrigued and I would love to hear your thoughts or let's just even start a discussion down below in the discussion section is why does our government allow formaldehyde releasing agents to be put in any products that come in contact with human beings when it is a known carcinogen? Bueller? Bueller? Lastly, what I wanted to add is where you're going to find these things are in products like makeup, particularly in face powders, eyeshadows, blushes, pressed powder versions of those, moisturizers, conditioners. So friends, do yourself a favor. Just take a look at the ingredients at your product. I've noticed with a lot of mainstream conventional makeup, they do not list the ingredients on the website. So keep your eye out. Check out the resources I'm going to list below of ways to recognize these chemicals. And do yourself a favor and you know, do what the FDA is not doing and regulate what's coming into your house and being put on your body. And I'll see you next week. Bye.